Eight in prison for harassing Pueblo officials. Eight who? Eight what? Eight where? You know what it is. Eight sovereign citizens. I just found this article today. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit here. Um, this is out of Denver, posted March 15th, 2020. A group of anti-government activists, that's a nice thing to call them, activists, who waged a campaign of harassment against at least four Pueblo County officials are in prison for violating state laws. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Common Sense Academy. I'm Joe Pometto. Joe, the lawyer, I am your host. On this show, we talk about sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and other legal miscreants, and we point out the absurdities in their arguments. We also learn the law and have a little bit of fun at the same time. If you like my channel, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. Most people who watch are not subscribed, so hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button for me. Come along for my for my journey. Also, sign up for my email list. There's a link below. You'll get a free PDF on the history and examination of sovereign citizen movement written by me before we get into the rest of this article before we go many of you have been here before you are familiar with what I call the same time sip it, we take a little sip together it's cheers um, it's soothing it makes us feel good and it prepares us for the article and for the day so whatever you're drinking raise your glass in the air you may be drinking vodka you may be drinking you who you may be drinking Sapporo beer okay I drink diet coke and coffee if you know me well raise your glass in the air it tastes better when we sip together The activists involved here, they call them activists. That cracks me up. Who is this journalist? Robert Bokowitz. Robert, you have no idea what you're dealing with here, sir. They are not activists. I'm sorry. That is go that is just being a little too nice to these people. They are not activists. They are another A they're they're another A word, okay, that I don't want to bring up. Okay. The activists targeted the officials during a three-year period ending when a statewide grand jury indicted the activists in 2017. The harassed officials inclu included Pueblo District Court Judge Judges Deborah Eiler and Kim Karn, District Attorney Jeff Chosner, and Sheriff Kirk Taylor. Participants who waged the, the harassment campaign sometimes are known as sovereign citizens. Oh, oh no, they are always known as sovereign citizens. Excuse me, that's what I get for drinking all that soda. The FBI characterizes members of that movement as anti-government activists who contend they are separate or sovereign from the United States and contend they don't have to answer to any government authority. You're correct about that, Mr. Robert. The harassment typically took the form of filing in the office of county clerks and recorders phony documents against the officials. One type of phony document was purported liens against homes of the officials. A lien is a financial claim on property that prevents the owner from selling until the amount of le the lien is paid to the holder of the lien. They attempted to put a lien on my home, Taylor recently told the Pueblo chieftain. They tried to extort me for $100,000. That is correct. Even sheriffs have taken mortgages and we have credit ratings. Liens can be negative factors in credit ratings. Absolutely. Eight of the activist defendants were convicted in 2018 in Denver in a case that received limited public attention. Chosner called the case to the attention of the Pueblo chieftain. The Colorado District, the Colorado Attorney General's Office prosecuted the indictment, which was in Denver District Court. Taylor said he, Eiler, Karn, and Chosner testified as prosecution witnesses. In addition to Pueblo County officials who were targeted, the indictment also accused the activists of harassing and retaliating against public officials in Denver, Boulder, and Gilpin counties. The defendants lived in the Denver area, but had access to grind in court cases in each of the counties. Ooh, oh, we're going to get revenge on the courts. The eight were charged with such crimes as criminal extortion, attempting to influence a public servant, and retaliation against a public official. 
The indictment alleged the defendants made a substantial threat to confine or restrain, cause economic hardship to, cause bodily injury to, damage the property of, damage the reputation of the officials. That's interesting. I wonder if there were physical threats um, that these sovereigns issued at some point in time. The activists falsely claimed to be judges and administrators of a people's grand jury. Oh, oh, oh that's a good one. In one instance in 2016, some in the anti-government group issued a phony arrest warrant against Karn, calling for her to be put on trial. Wow. The indictment alleged that one of the anti-government, I can't call them that, I'm sorry. The indictment alleged that one of the sovereign citizen participants in a conversation that was recorded stated that, here it is, if Karn did not appear for trial, they could go and grab her, haul her ass down here. That's a physical threat. The harassment against the judge stemmed from her presiding over a domestic relations case and a real estate case, which were of interest to the sovereign citizens, cannot call them activists, or people connected to them. Probably they weren't paying their child support. The activists filed, uh, I can't believe he's using that word filed a document accusing her with embezzling funds and demanding that she resign. Failure to do so will be treated as an act of insurrection and sedition, the document said. Ooh, these are big words, sovereign citizens. It was followed by the phony arrest warrant. They commanded me to arrest Judge Karn, Taylor said. I did not do what they commanded me to do. Oh, they called on the sheriff and gave him a command. Yeah, okay, that's going to be in my book. The sheriff received the demand that he resigned for allegedly committing crimes. That notice used the same language about failing to resign would be treated by the sovereigns as an act of insurrection. In other instances, Chaucer was the target of phony documents signed by the sovereigns. Can't call them activists. The defendants were sentenced to varying prison terms, the longest being 38 years. Ouch! According to the Attorney General's office, at least one of the convicted activists has filed a notice of appeal from a prison in Cannon City. The eight are Bruce Doucette, Stephen Nowsty, Janice Blee, Stephen Blyfield, Lawrence Goodman, David Kofalt, Harlan Smith, and Brian Baylog. Wow. Wow. I mean, the, what, these, these poor people are being brainwashed, um, and then they're being driven to um, do things that are really, really dumb and they get them sent to jail uh, and they're proving absolutely zero point in the process. Zero, nothing, this, this, this is nothing. I, I, I'm sorry, it just, it needs to end. Some people uh, die in war for a worthy cause. This is not a worthy cause, sovereigns. It is not a worthy cause. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm sorry. Read my book when it comes out. Okay, thank you for tuning into the Common Sense Academy. Um, I'm going to continue to cover the sovereign citizen movement to expose it, to damage it, and to ridicule it. Um, you know, and to explain to people what the law actually really is, because, you know, it's true. You don't always want to consent to the police, but pretty much everything else the sovereign say is incorrect. So watch my show if you're interested in this con in this type of content. Also, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I would really appreciate a subscription right now. I'm trying to get to 10,000. Thank you very much. Joe the Lawyer out.